Hey guys, it's your boy Gary here. Today we're painting our death core in the classic 143 Siege Regiment colors. That's right. Today we're gonna make them blue, abadi, abadai for the Emperor on this episode of The Miniature Men. The first thing you gotta do is prime your models. Me personally, I like to do it with an airbrush and some Vallejo primer color. We're gonna use black here because we want to build up from that dark base like we have shadows in the model. I also like using an airbrush because it keeps me from clogging up the details that I find in resin. The first color we're putting on the models is the Fang. It comes from Games Workshop and it comes in these tidy little airbrush pots that you can use if you're just starting with an airbrush or if you're looking to save time. It's also cool because it helps you know how thin you want to get the paint in the airbrush so everything works right. You're going to go real light with the Fang. Build it up slowly from the bottom to the top, focusing on adding more opacity as you build it up towards that very top. This makes it look like you're already shading the model without doing any actual shading. You want to try to limit how much of this you're spraying from underneath the model. Next up is Thunderhawk Blue. This doesn't come in airbrush paint, so you're going to have to break it down. Look at those airbrush paints to get a good idea of what consistency you want to have it at. You're going to start building this up from about 45 degree angles underneath and building that opacity to the top of the model. Build up the color and a little warmth to the side of the model. This is the secret ingredient that makes your death core different than Space Wolves. So make sure you have this in your paint palette. You want to start building slowly with the paint. If you go too hard, you're going to get an inconsistent spray or you're going to have color where you don't want it. So start light with the color and build it up over time. If you're struggling to think about what's going to look good here, try to consider where light might be hitting the model. On a vehicle, it's going to be big surfaces. On the infantry, it's going to poke in between the arms. It's going to reach the bottom of the coat. So make sure you're hitting those areas pretty consistently. You also want to make sure that the shoulders and the tops of the arms are getting pretty full opacity with the Thunderhawk Blue. Then we have Rest Gray. This is the part where things get a little different from infantry and vehicles. With your infantry, you're going to keep building that Zenithal layer right around the top of the model. The tops of the arms, the collar, the shoulders. Make sure you pick up edges and surfaces that stick out from the sides of the models. It's important to remember that there's collars on all the infantry, so make sure you hit that at the top of all of your infantry models. If you're doing vehicles, you're going to focus on bolts or parts that are poking out, but you're also going to start building visual interest on the corners, edges, or the edges of the panels even on the vehicle. Rust gray is very different than the other two colors, so make sure you're building it up slowly. You don't want to overdo anything. Build that coat slow. Use your rust gray to pick out the details of the model. This will give a really stark contrast and give a lot of interest and in shading to elements like vents, edges, corners, bolts, or any of the other objects that are modeled onto the vehicles. As you keep going, you're going to find that your airbrush is starting to kind of box out some of the larger panels. Go ahead and embrace that. Smooth it over if you get the chance. Go nice and slow so you get a nice even square on those big panels. You can see here again, we're getting another big panel by getting this bracket and these bolts and it's starting to square off the panel as I work my way around it. Hitting the side box here, just the sides and the top to give the effect of light on it. You can see me here that I'm hitting each of these little bolt clusters just a little bit from an upwards angle on each one to give it a little bit more highlighting.
After that, you're gonna take some Fenrisian gray and start laying that on in basically the same places that the rust gray went, but you're going to try to build it a little bit softer and a little bit smaller on the very edges of the edges and the very corners of the corners. You wanna pick out things like shoulders, elbows, the tops of the folds on the arms, the bottom of the ridge of their coat. Build out surfaces that the light would really hit hard. For vehicles, it's not any different. Just remember to revisit those panel boxes you've been outlining with rust gray and hit the corners with Fenrisian gray. If you see elements that are sticking out from the sides like the side hatch, go ahead and hit the tops and corners of that to make it stand out even more. Really make an effort to double up on those silhouette corners that make the vehicle stand out and any other elements that you want to draw attention to, like this top hatch. The last color we're gonna do for this tutorial is Fenrisian Gray, but in the normal paint pot. You're gonna dry brush this on to the edges, the bolts, the, I don't know, all the little tidbits that stick out from the model. Just highlight where those edges are on the tanks. You might notice I didn't do this with the infantry. That's because tanks have hard edges that are made out of metal. The infantry are wearing coats that are made out of wool. Wool doesn't have hard edges. It has soft, fuzzy edges. So all the airbrushing we did should cover all the gradients that would naturally be on a wool coat. If you wanna go back and highlight or dry brush with this lightest color, do a little bit and see what you think. Me personally, I like the look of a fuzzy coat. It makes sense for wool. And that's it guys. If you haven't used an airbrush before or you're interested in trying, this is a great project to start. It's a real simple way to build up visual interest on a model without having to do anything spectacular. Using an airbrush cuts down on the brush strokes that you see on the models, which is really important for big flat surfaces that you see on vehicles. It also gives you a chance to replicate the fuzziness of a wool coat that you would find on the infantry. And this tutorial is all done, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't yell at me for using an airbrush, please. We're not gonna do it all the time, don't worry. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and follow us on Instagram, at The Miniature Men. We'll be posting new updates on Instagram for our little projects. And if you're subscribed, we'll be giving you more updates in this video series. Next up, I'll show you how to mask your vehicles. That's it for now, guys. We'll see you next time. I blew abadi abadai, and I blew abadi abadai for the emperor.